Hey, so I want to do a quick video. I wish this video existed when my wife and I first got our RV. Um, and we finally figured everything out, so I wanted to share what we learned. So we have a uh, diesel pusher Class A with the bed that serves as the engine cover. Pardon the mess, we're right in the middle of some reorganization and cleaning up. And we discovered, we're up here in Oregon, that mold developed on the engine cover, which is the bottom part of the bed, really quickly. Uh, especially during the winter, it was really bad. So. We did a bunch of reading online, looked at how to fix it, did what everybody said. I mean, we got the uh, this stuff, which was expensive, you know, like 100 bucks for enough for the bed. Uh, tried insulation, um, you can see that piece there. And nothing really worked, even with the insulation. Um, I mean, at first, when we put the, uh, I forget what it's called, that plastic net stuff that lets air flow, like water would pool on top of the um, engine cover. What we discovered as I did more research is that essentially by putting that net meshing, what we had done is not solve our problem. We had created a giant dehumidifier. So if you do a little bit of reading about condensation and the dew point, what you'll learn is that every surface everywhere, water is constantly condensing and evaporating off that surface. And given an ambient air temperature and the surface of a solid, the dew point is at what temperature more water will collect than will evaporate. So there's all these calculators online. You look at the ambient air temperature, the surface temperature, and the relative humidity. Those are the important things. And if the relative, the higher the relative humidity, the warmer a surface can be and still act as a dehumidifier, which is just something that water condenses on. So finally the solution, we did all this complicated stuff, and it was important, but finally the solution was just to get a dehumidifier. And uh, we didn't fool around, I wanted the problem to be gone. So we just bought this great big thing from Amazon. Um, and let me tell you, it is amazing how much water that thing pulls out of the air. I mean, it's insane. We empty it when it's raining here in Oregon, I mean, we'll empty it, and it holds like a gallon and a half of water. We'll empty it every couple of days. Um, if you make spaghetti or something, all that pos all that water that you boiled into the air, that gets pulled out too. So to really make sure we have the problem under control, because again, I didn't ever want it to happen again, we bought this really simple, um, if you can see it there, humidity and temperature sensor. So the engine cover doesn't have insulation on the bottom of it, so the wood of the engine cover is gonna be approximately the outside ambient air temperature. In fact, it's probably gonna be cooler because there's no sun shining on it, and there's not a lot of airflow down there. So as part of this um, temperature thingamabobber with the relative humidity, there's an outside sensor that we put outside. So right now, outside it's 60 degrees, so the engine cover is probably a little colder than that. Inside it's 70 and 50% relative humidity. Um, so you would, what you would do here is you can go online and plug these numbers in, and 50% is way too high. Like the dehumidifier has been off for a couple days. It's been raining. I've been cleaning some carpet. We had pasta the other night. Um, so I just turned the dehumidifier back on. But you plug in this number, the ambient air temperature, and you plug in the relative humidity, and it will tell you at what temperature water will start to condense faster than it evaporates. Again, that's called the dew point. Um, on a surface. And so as long as the temperature of the surface of our engine cover is warmer than the, um, the dew point based on, again, ambient air temperature, relative humidity, then we're okay. But as soon as the engine cover gets colder than that, then we have problems. So one more thing we did to really try to alleviate the problem. So the bed was cold because there was no insulation. And so if you look here, what we now have is we have the engine cover. Um, and to prevent mold, we painted this with Kills Primer, the oil-based. And I mean, I put like three coats on it. Then we have an inch, two inches, I think, or an inch and a half of this ISO foam insulation. And when I applied this, it's not just sitting there. Because if it's just sitting there, you have an opportunity for water to get in between the insulation and the engine cover. So instead, I use spray foam, the uh, you know the great stuff you get in a can. It's this kind of similar to the same stuff they use to apply um, these insulation panels to commercial flat roofs. And we put that all around the perimeter, 
and then stuck the uh, foam to the top of the engine cover. And we did this outside the RV, of course. And what that did is that foam then filled the space between the engine cover and the, and the insulation and made it so that, yes, water could get under there, but it's way, way less likely. Odds are very slim that water is going to get under there. Um, and so that seals that off. I don't know if that was required or not. I was just tired of the problem, tired of building new engine covers because they got moldy. Didn't want to have to deal with it anymore. So we did that, um, and then we put that breathable stuff on top. That allows air to flow, because no matter what, if you have a mattress, unless you have like some kind of plastic thing over covering the whole thing, underneath the mattress is going to be a high humidity zone. So we take the relative humidity in the RV, which you know right now it says it's 50%, and figure under the mattress it's going to be higher than that. So the airflow helps you know get that humidity out still, which of course it doesn't work if the engine cover is below the dew point. So that's why the dehumidifier reduces the relativity of humidity, which lowers the dew point, which makes it so that we can live here in Oregon in the winter and not have water collect on our engine cover. Anyways, I really hope this helps somebody because we have spent probably close to $1,000 replacing the engine cover, like, and not getting it professionally done, just going to Home Depot, buying a nice piece of wood, cutting it, some supports, gluing it, all that some stuff. Insulation, we had three quarter inch before, this breathable stuff, and then finally the dehumidifier. So if you have this problem, if you don't have a dehumidifier, please get one. I would get something to monitor the humidity level because that tells you if it's actually working, if the problem is gonna go away. And as soon as you have the humidity detector and temperature, you can go calculate the dew point and find out for yourself how things are doing. Um, you know, so it just lets you know the problem is solved instead of just throwing stuff at it and hoping that it's solved. Um, anyway, so hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps somebody. Have a great day, safe time driving and RVing, and I hope you're enjoying life.